So one of the things I think it's important to discuss is I wanted to do this project in phases. And basically the way you see the truck right now is phase one. That was get the motor in, get it running, get it reliable, figure out the wiring, integrate the wiring with the factory harness, put the drive shaft in, just get it running, nurse this stock rear end along. You can see the they just salted the roads big time up here. We had some ice, black ice conditions, so the truck is a mess. Um, the stock rear end is really weak, but they say they're rated for about 300 horsepower. The guys that have Mazda rotary turbos and things look for this rear end because it has the gear ratio, and they say they're pretty strong, about 300 horsepower. Um, when I drag raced it, I had these tires on the back, and obviously they're not going to hook their stones they have a 600 treadwear rating um, so they <clears throat> so I wasn't going to hurt the thing at all it did a 2160 foot and we'll go through that later on so phase one was get it running what's phase two phase two is to get the rear end done we're going to um, put that in get a new heavy duty drive shaft made for it so I'm not taking any further risks than necessary with a homemade drive shaft and then we're going to start working on the suspension. Phase three will be uh, maybe some engine upgrade upgrades. I would love to do a cam heads and intake. I may end up having to do another block uh, just because this is getting up there in miles. If I find another donor engine, I might buy that engine and then put the cam heads and intake on that. And um, so the steering, I'm already looking, you, you may laugh when I mentioned before that we want to do some drifting. I'm already looking at making my own steering arms, increasing the steering angle as much as I can. I'm looking at putting bigger brakes on it all the way around. Obviously it's going to get the 8.8 .8 Explorer brakes in the rear. I'm going to try fitting some, uh, retrofitting some big rotors on the front. Um, that's, I like to do the research, I like to do the groundwork take things apart, measure them, and see if I can make it work. I'll make my own caliper brackets. I actually have, I really like these calipers from the Ford Explorer. They're a dual piston caliper. They're relatively inexpensive from some of the parts stores, like 30 bucks, and uh, not including the core charge. A dual piston caliper, I think that's a really good idea. Um, get some, some good braking on the front. So, it's not out of the question. Like I say, there's several phases. Once I do the motor upgrades, not sure about power adders. There is no room up here for an intercooler and any of that sort of thing. One crazy idea, you folks will let me know if I should do this, is I'm talking about a toolbox mounted turbo. So maybe the intercooler assembly could go underneath and the turbo could come up through the, the exhaust could, and intake could pass through the floor of the bed and go into the toolbox. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, it's not something that I'm intimidated by doing. I know I could make it happen. It's just a matter of time and expense. If I do a turbo, it's going to be um, something off of maybe a Ford um, Power Stroke engine or something like that. So uh, I can't afford Turbonetics or um, Precision Turbo or any of those other guys. I'm, I can't. I don't even want to spend the money for an eBay Turbo. As good as they are, and the success that Boosted Boys has had with them, and many of the others that have used them, um, just not going to do it. Um, I'm trying to do this on a budget. So sometimes when you do things with junkyard parts, you end up spending more money than if you just bought them. But what's the fun in that, right? So we're going to try and uh, work around that. So there's at least three phases of the truck as the truck gets faster. I am a fabrication shop. I do roll bars and roll cages. I'll do a chrome molly cage in it. Um, I don't know if it'll ever go faster than 11s to be quite honest with you, but it would be cool to put a roll bar in it. I have no problem um, fabricating those and um, again, just something I like to do. It'd be neat as a conversation piece. I don't want to change the look of the truck at all. The entire scope of the project is basically not even wash it. It's supposed to be a sleeper. I want to try to keep it that way. And the only thing I'm going to do is because this is getting a little out of control is get a new bumper for it because um, I've patched it up here and there. And it's just getting 
the salt they're using on the roads and the new chemicals on the roads, man, it's just like acid. It's, it seems like it's rust the vehicles out even quicker than it did 10 years ago. So anyway, I don't want to babble on any more than um, you're already going to suffer with. So there are phases of the project. I'll walk you through phase one, and as phase two and three develop, we'll continue on with those. This has the truck pan on it still. You can see it still sticks down below the cross member. The factory cross member used to go through the middle here from one side to the other. And I made this U shape. This is a 3 16th wall. It was two by two box tubing that I cut the notch out of it to. You'll see some pictures of that later. I cut the notch out of it and then to protect the pan in case I got close to bottom and out. I put this uh, really strong piece on it, but you can see the shape of that cross member that I fabricated. I bought the I bought the motor mounts from off of eBay that bolted directly to the block, and then I made my own standoffs to go to the uh, frame. And uh, it's just a quick look at the dual exhaust and the 4L60E tranny. Again, that came right out of the truck. I didn't even take it off the back of the motor. And uh, some of the other modifications I did, I, I notched the frame so both the pipes would go through. It's gusseted, super strong. I had to, uh, because this had a two-piece drive shaft in it from the factory, it had a center baron mounted right here. I decided to make a, a full drive shaft hoop that tied into the factory cross member. You got plenty of room for travel both up and down. And it fit in nice. There's more details of the notch in the frame. You can see that it's gusted. It used to be open and on the backside. It's all stitched and welded in. And then uh, Bradford Motors custom exhaust did the, the mufflers. We stood them up side by side so they would be. The gas tank is on this side so we couldn't run duels on both sides. And then he did a really nice job with the, the tailpipes. They fit around the factory spare. And then they come right around and out just like factory. This truck's been on the road for seven months. It's got a lot of this. We're in New England. They got salt on the roads now and it's just a big problem. So I had to make my own drive shaft. This is a Dodge truck center tube with the Mazda slipped inside it and welded. And then it has a, I looked up a universal joint and um, it has the 4L60E input shaft with a universal joint that fit the Dodge tube and that 4L60 yoke. So that was it for the underside. Had to make my own tranny cross member mounts. I've got some photographs of this. I can uh, put them up later, but it's the factory Mazda cross member. It had to move forward, uh, backwards like eight inches to pick up the tranny mount for the 4L60E. It's, uh, it's a bolt-in. There's my fuel lines. And um, the factory Mazda had a two-bolt flange. I just drilled a hole in the center and the 4L60E mount went right in the, the back. My fuel pump is right here. I just took and welded two fittings in the bottom of the tank. The mistake I made is I used the same size line going from the tank to the pump. I got to put a number 10 hose on that right now. It's only a, a number six. So uh, it might start for fuel at some point, but uh, just put uh, pipe threaded bungs in the tank. It's a factory tank. It worked out really well. So that's it underneath. Someday we'll have that 8.8 .8 in here and we'll, uh, we'll get it all back together. So. 
we'll be able to really put some of that power Next to the ground. Next time on KEI Fabrication. Hide all the women and children.